In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have such a beautiful gospel lesson today, a very simple one in uh, our liturgy, the gospel according to Luke, chapter 6, verse 31 to 36. We've heard this many, many times. I just want to take a, lo- a couple of uh, verses from it and see how we can apply it to our everyday lives. It's, the Lord said, as you wish that men would do to you, do so to them. This is where we get the golden rule from. Treat others the way you would want to be treated. It seems so very simple. This has been for thousands and thousands of years a basic teaching of morality, of ethics, of God, of our Lord and Savior Jesus. But we look at our culture and our society today. Do we treat others? Are people treating others the way they would want to be treated? Do we love or do we hate and judge and criticize and gossip and so forth and so on? We see this happening negatively through social media. We see this happening in the news. We see this just continuously happening. People are always, it seems, and the highlights of the news is always how people are treating others badly and poorly. Jesus said, put the other person first. Treat them the way you would want to be treated. And then he says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. So certainly we want to love our friends, our relatives, our family. But those are the only ones who love us and we love them. But how about others? How about reaching out and loving other people? Being kind and caring, forgiving. Do we see a lot of that going on in our world today? And if you do good to those who do good to you, What credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. A beautiful little teaching there about lending and giving that we should never expect anything in return. It's a beautiful tradition and biblical way of giving as we give in the church, when we give our stewardship, when we give our donations and we support the church, we don't expect anything back, but we give freely as Christ has given salvation to us and he's given to us, we give freely. And we are blessed back and God blesses us and provides us with so many gifts, spiritual, emotional, financial, beautiful blessings that God gives back to us when we give and we lend without expecting anything else in return. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For God is kind to the ungrateful and the selfish. How many people we see in our world just looking at television, just crossing the street, just driving and being tailgated by someone or being cut off? People ungrateful and selfish. Jesus says God is kind even to them. Could we not also seek to be kind to others and to all whom we come into contact with? Be merciful even as your Father is merciful. As we go home today, let us remember that last passage, that last verse, to be merciful, to show mercy. And the Greek word of mercy is eleison, eleon. We say that over and over in our liturgy, kiri eleison. It's having mercy. And the word eleon means oil. It means soothing, comforting oil. That's what the word, the derivative of that word is. So when we're merciful to others, we're like, we're like oil, we're soothing, we're comforting and being merciful to others as we 
expect mercy from God. That's the message from the Gospel today. Uh, a very simple, straightforward message that we all should seek every day to try to put into practice in our lives. And so that's, that's message one of my sermon today. And I just want to briefly touch on message two, something that we have seen uh, all this week and last week, the big thing happening um, in the NFL, and are people standing, are they sitting, are they kneeling during the national anthem? It's a big, big controversy. I know we've, we've seen it. There's a lot, uh, and I'm not going to get political on this, there's a lot of opinions um, uh, about this. Um, and it's just interesting how uh, these things kind of come about, and we hope that um, my opinion is in all areas, not just in the football games, we should seek to be respectful and kind, just as we heard in the gospel uh, today. Unfortunately, we see in politics, and I'm going to talk about briefly politics, but not getting political, okay? Because politics now has um, inserted itself in almost every aspect of our lives. It used to be, uh, if you wanted to discuss politics, or you know, you turn on the certain C-SPAN or certain um, channel, and you could hear all about politics. Beautiful, wonderful. But now it's in sports the NBA, the NFL, everyone is inserting their political view. Now it's in entertainment, when you watch the Emmys, and you watch, it's inserted in there, everywhere. And I, I submit that this is not healthy for our society. I think people, when they want to watch a football game, want to relax and get away from the stress of life and just enjoy a game. Or if they want to be entertained and watch, go to a concert, they're not going to be lectured about politics by the entertainer. Just sing. But this affects how we think and our philosophy of life. And unfortunately, it seems that in many sectors, politics has replaced religion. It has become a religion for people. People can tell you all about the Republican Party, all about the Democratic Party, and all of the policies. They could quote it. And you've heard me say this before. But ask one of those persons to quote something from the Bible, something from a holy book, something that is edifying, a memory verse. Quote this passage today. That should be our religion. And yes, be involved in the political sphere, that's fine, but not that it becomes a religion to us. And we see that happening in college campuses. We see it everywhere. Let's make Jesus the center of our faith. Let's make him our religion and our core. And speaking of standing or kneeling, um, in our church, we do all of the above, and it's all good. There's a time to stand. We say the prayers, we, the creed. We stand out of respect. There's times that we sit to pray and to take a little time of, of um, and still be involved in the liturgy. There's a time to sit. There's a time to kneel. We all take a knee every Sunday when we ask the Holy Spirit to change bread and wine to the body and blood of Christ. And I think in that way we see a most appropriate way of using our bodies in worship and in the liturgy. The Orthodox Church and the Orthodox spirituality and Orthodox faith is very physical. There's a physicality to our faith. We sit, we stand, we kneel, we actually lift up our arms, we make the sign of the cross. We kiss icons. The Christian life is not just some psychological mind exercise. And we think about God. We kind of think about faith. That's, that's okay. But in orthodoxy, there's the full 
balance of the, 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 the mind, our rational mind, spirituality, and physicality all together in the beauty of our Orthodox Church. There's monks right now as we speak up on Mount Athos doing thousands of metanias, standing up, kneeling down, standing up, and prostrating, praying. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Using their whole body in prayer. You used your body today just to physically come to church. And that's a beautiful thing. It takes a little effort and energy to physically open the Bible at home and to read a little bit. Not just think about God, but to open His Word and to allow His Word to sink in. We had such a fantastic men's group Bible study on Wednesday night. And um, just reading passages in God's Word and allowing it to sink into our minds. So may God bless us and be with us. And let us know that in the Orthodox Church we stand, we take a knee, we sit, we pray, we use our whole bodies uh, for our Lord Jesus and to worship Him and to grow closer to Him. In His holy name we pray always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.